Good morning. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, we're civil engineering students at the University of Houston downtown. I am Jared Reed. This is... Hello, my name is Cecil Rodriguez. Good morning, I'm Ben Gizzo. All right, so the purpose of our research is to make CMU, uh, load-bearing CMU blocks soundproof by replacing a portion of the fine aggregate with rock wool insulation. Uh, all this in accordance with ASTM standards. Uh, before we jump into the presentation, let's uh, talk a little bit about a rock about rock wool and its benefits. So a few of the benefits of rock wool itself, it is sound absorbent. So that's pretty good when it comes to isolating sounds outside. It is fireproof or fire resistant. It's also completely proof to mold, mildew and other bacteria. And I believe it is also water resistant. So, but for today, we will be focusing on the sound absorption side of it to help see the benefits when it comes to including it into the admixture of concrete in CMU blocks. Ask yourself this question. Have you ever been, you know, in your office or maybe your apartment and all you can hear is the construction going on outside, or maybe the train while you're trying to sleep? I know it annoys me every time I'm trying to go to sleep. Um, we, we have found, uh, we may have found a solution to that problem. And uh, it might've been the rock wall in the masonry units. So for this project, we're gonna cover the abstract, the codes used for the cement blocks, which was the ASTM codes, the mix design that we used. And from there, we went to the cylinder strength to find our selection. We did uh, do the CMU block dimension to find the final mix. And from there, we tested the acoustic test that's uh, for the soundproof. And finally, we got our strength test to see if it matches your average masonry blocks. So as Jared said before, the need for soundproofing performance for buildings, for residential and for commercial has become an increasing issue in the industry due to increase in population, traffic, and the industry expanding. The goal is to make the CMU block uh, soundproof by adding the rock wool into the concrete mix by creating a standard mix design by volume and incrementally replacing the fine aggregate that is used in the mix design by rock wool by, we did by 25%, 50%, and 75%. From there, we tested the soundproof and finally the compression test just to make sure, as I said before, to make sure it matches the, your average masonry units uh, block. These are the codes that we used. Uh, we used the C90 for the load bearing concrete masonry unit. We used C33 and C140 for both our mix design and the strength test. These are just some of the um, uh, materials we used that met all the ASCM codes without adding any like fly ash or any add-on ingredients such as quickrete all-purpose sand, quickrete gravel, Portland cement, and the rock wool. From here, I'll let Jesus take over. All right. Hello. So for the mix design, we used the absolute volume method. Um, here are the steps that we used. Um, first step was we had to find what our strengths our aim strength was, we settled on 4,500 PSI just so that we would be over the required minimum and try to surpass it if possible. And according to this table, this also gives you your um, water to cement ratio, which is 0.45. And Quickrete actually was kind enough to provide us with the sieve analysis of both the sand and the gravel. And so we use that to find the bulk volume and for our mix. Also using our nominal maximum aggregate size against from the reports provided by Quickrete, we were able to find our target error and we decided on our workability or slump to be between one and four 
that's usually used for beams and reinforced walls. And since it is a CMU block, you know, it is used on walls. So we decided that would be appropriate. And the, for the water requirement, again, we used the maximum aggregate size. And we found using our slump, we use this table from design and control concrete mixtures to find our how much water is required. And then we proceeded to use that same water to concrete ratio to find how much, I mean, cement, my apologies, how much cement is needed in the mixture. Here, our main focus would be the coarse aggregate. Uh, all those formulas used there are basically, again, thanks to Quickry for providing the sieve analysis, we were able to find exactly how much percentage of the mixture itself is gonna be the coarse aggregate and the water or the cement we found through all the other tables previously provided. Now for the volume method, basically what you do, you're mixing for a one cubic yard batch. And so we convert all of our weights that we found so far converted them into volumes using the densities of all of our materials. And the remainder of the cubic yard we would use for our fine aggregate. And again, we convert it from volume back to weight. And since we're replacing our fine with rock wool, we kind of assumed, okay, what, what happens if we replace 100% of the fine? That's how we find a rock wool. Later on, then we, we play with those ratios by, okay, we want 75% for this mixture, we want 50% of rock wool replacement, or 25%. And here we can see our cylinder strength. These are kind of, I'll let Jared take over this section. Thank you, Jesus. So you can see here that we prepared uh, three different test cylinders. One, had, we replaced the fine aggregate with 25% rock wool, uh, another with 50% rock wool, and another with 75% rock wool. You can see here the strengths that we achieved. Uh, the 25% rock wool achieved of roughly 5,000 PSI strength. The 50% rock wool achieved a 5,000 PSI strength. And the 75% achieved a 4,800 PSI strength. All of these exceeded our targeted strength of 4,500. And it also exceeds the required strength for a load-bearing CMU block, according to ASTM C90. Um, so here's the uh, size requirements that were also found in size 90, um, not size 90, ASTM C90. Uh, we prepared an eight inch block. It's a full size block. So it's roughly eight by 16. All right, so here's our acoustic test. Um, what we did is we actually took uh, our cell phone with a decibel meter and we entrapped it inside of the hollow portion of the CMU block. So our sample piece would be the block that's on the bottom. Right now it has a decibel meter inside of it. And what we would do, first we took the decibel meter and at two feet away in open air, we operated a skill saw to see what it is and what the sound, how many decibels it would be in open air. And then we entrapped it inside the block and we took a reading at two foot, uh, every two foot up to, let's see, up to 10 feet. And then we did four foot increments up to 22 feet. Uh, the whole point of operating the skill saw was to simulate construction happening outside of an office building or outside of your apartment that you would be in. All right, so the results from the acoustic test, uh, you can see our graph here on the right. The blue line is actually the factory block. The orange line would be the first block that we made. The gray would be the second and the orange would be the third block. So you can see that there's a pretty drastic difference between our blocks. Um, this is due to uh, when we were creating our mix design, we actually used a table that was for entrained air for our water content. And this was an error on our part. So it resulted in lower workability of the concrete. Uh, so as we perfected our consolidation method of the blocks, it got the acoustic readings got better and better and better. Uh, so our first block, like we did it all in in one lift, we filled the, our whole mold in one time and we rotted it uh, and then let, let it sit for, was it three, four days? Uh, our second block, we tried another method. We did it in two absolute volumes 
uh, and rotted each layer individually. And the third block, we did it in three equal layers. The third block having the best results. Uh, you can see in our table down here on the left side, uh, you can see that block one, uh, compared to the factory block, it increased the acoustic readings by about 1% to 3%. Block two increased from about 3% to 5% increase in acoustic properties. And the third block being from 10 to 15% increase in the acoustic properties. All right, so this is the compressive strength of our physical blocks. Uh, our targeted, our targeted strength was 4,500, but our required strength for an individual block is 1,800 PSI, according to ASTM C90. Uh, we were able to achieve uh, 3,300 PSI on our, our initial block, 5,400 PSI on our second block, and 6,000 PSI on our third block. Uh, that's roughly 25% increase in strength from the, our targeted uh, strength. So overall, the CMU blocks surpassed expected strengths while improving decibel readings. Our best block increased the acoustic properties by roughly 10 to 15%, while also having almost triple the minimum required strength as per ASTM C90. Um, so some errors that we found in our research is that we used the, we assumed air and train concrete, which resulted in less water than required for the concrete mix. Uh, that resulted in the lower workability. Uh, another error was due to the water absorption of the rock wool that was not considered. Um, knowing the absorption of the rock wool, we could have accounted for the water loss in our mix design and increased the amount of water used, which would have resulted in higher workability of the concrete and probably more consistent results between blocks. Thank you for watching. Y'all have any questions?